Hey guys, today we're going to look at qualitative and quantitative decision making. We're going to answer the question, what is qualitative and quantitative data? So quantitative data is numerical. The quantities can be counted, their measures or graphs. Qualitative data is observational or descriptive. It cannot be counted. It describes by words and images rather than numbers. So the way I like to remember it is quantitative has an N in it for numbers, and then qualitative has an L in it for language. We're more just describing what's happening. So let's look at this information down here and decide which one is describing qualitative and which one is describing quantitative. So twice as likely, half as likely, 25% is likely, three-fourths as likely, three times as likely. Those all have numbers. So this one would be quantitative. versus the other box has impossible, unlikely, equally likely, certain, or likely. That is qualitative. They're not using exact measurements, but they are still describing what is going on just with language. So that is qualitative descriptors. So let's look at a comparison of our descriptors of probability. On the top, I wrote on the top of the number line are quantitative descriptors of probability with numbers. So that ranges from zero to 100%. And then the bottom has the qualitative descriptors from impossible to certain. So let's take a closer look at that. 0% would be the quantitative rate way to describe it and impossible would be the qualitative way. And then 1 to 49% would be quantitative, unlikely would be qualitative, 50% would be quantitative, equally likely would be qualitative, and then 100% certain would be quantitative and qualitative, and then 51% to 99% would be quantitative and likely would be qualitative. So you get the picture, qualitative is words and quantitative is numbers. So let's talk about how we can make some comparisons. Right here is showing Julia has a stack of cards that include pink, purple, orange, teal, and gray cards. She draws a card without looking and records the results for 90 draws. So let's just start out with some qualitative comparisons. One color is more likely to be drawn than another. So they did not give us numbers here, so we just need one number that is more likely to be drawn than a number. Um, pink has 20, and that is more likely to be drawn than the purple card that was drawn 10 times. So a qualitative descriptor of this table would be pink is more likely to be drawn than purple. And then we have one color is least likely of all to be drawn. So it's not giving us an exact number, but if I look at the lowest number, that would be orange. So orange is going to be the least likely to be drawn. Blank is more likely to be drawn than blank and blank combined. So let's look at one that has a really large number. The largest number I see, see on here is gray that has 30. So that would be more likely to be drawn than the purple and orange combined because those are 10 and 6, which would make 16. So gray is more likely to be drawn than the purple and the orange combined. So those were all qualitative comparisons. I didn't use numbers to describe what was going on, but I still was able to describe what was going on in the table. Now we're gonna get into some quantitative comparisons where we actually use numbers. So there is one color that is twice as likely to be drawn as another color. Um, well, these first two right here, pink was drawn 20 times and purple was drawn 10 times. So the pink was twice as likely to be drawn as the purple. And then we have one color that is a quarter or fourth as likely to be drawn as another color. Um, so orange and teal, six is one fourth of 24. So I believe that's what this one is describing. The orange 
is one fourth as likely to be drawn as the teal. And then the last one, we have one color that is three times as likely to be drawn as another color. So the purple was drawn 10 times and the gray was drawn 30 times. So the gray is three times as likely to be drawn as the purple. All right, let's look at our last question. Keith has a bag of shapes. He randomly selects a shape, records the results, and puts the shape back. He does this 30 times based on his experiment, which does not correctly compare the probabilities. So we are looking for a statement that is not true. So A says he is more likely to select a triangle than a diamond. Well, he selected a triangle eight times and a diamond five times, so this one is true, and we're looking for the one that's not true. B says he is more than twice as likely to select a square than a circle. So he selected a square 11 times and a circle six times. Twice as likely as a circle would be 12 or more, which did not happen here. So this one's false. Let's go through and make sure that the other ones are true and that we actually selected the false answer. C says he is less likely to select a circle than a triangle. That's true. He selected the circle six times and the triangle eight times. And then the last one says he is more than twice as likely to select a square than a diamond. That is true because twice as likely as a diamond would be 10 or more, which is what the square shows with 11. So B was the one that did not correctly compare the probabilities.